If you're looking to choose a BI tool for your organization, you are spoilt for choice. The last 10 to 15 years have seen an explosion of tools designed to help you turn your data into insights and dollars. Making the right choice of BI tool could save you a whole lot of time and potential headaches down the road, so it's a decision that merits consideration. But how do you know which one is right for you? What criteria should you be using to make that decision? Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. So before we look at choosing the right BI tool for you, let's just, for the uninitiated, briefly explain what a BI tool is and what it's designed to do. So businesses today produce a lot of data. Sales, marketing, finance, HR, operations, R&D, social media, website, the list goes on. Making sense of it all is, for want of a better word, complicated, which is where BI tools come in. Their job is to not only bring various data sources together, but also to aggregate and visualize them in interactive, shareable reports so that businesses can monitor activity and performance. So those are the three main steps of the business intelligence process that BI tools are designed for, data, analysis, and sharing. When it comes to choosing the right BI tool for you, you'll need to consider each one of these in turn, which we'll discuss in a minute. However, before that, there's also the question of accessibility. Some tools are completely cloud-based with nothing to install. Others are cross-platform, so you can work on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Then there are others that only work on Windows. Microsoft Power BI, for example, can only be downloaded and installed on a Windows machine, meaning that if you're a Mac user, you'd also need to install a PC emulator, which can really slow things down. Not ideal. So it's definitely an important thing to bear in mind first. All right, so the first question you'll want to ask yourself is, what data do we have? You'll want to do a quick audit and note down all of the data sources you currently have, and also the ones you might be considering in the future. Perhaps you're looking at onboarding some new application or service. You've probably got some Excel or CSV files, perhaps a SQL database or two, or even a data warehouse. But what other applications do you use? Do you use a CRM like Salesforce or HubSpot? Accounting software, maybe Xero or QuickBooks? What about Google Analytics? Which marketing channels do you use? What about social media accounts? Make a list and then when you're looking for a BI tool, check which ones have built-in connectors to them. You see, all BI tools have their own a la carte menu of data source connectors. You may find that none of them connect to everything you use, but you'll probably find one that does to most of them. So once you know which BI tools have the right connectors, there are a couple of other things you'll need to consider when it comes to data. The first of those is data preparation. Does your data need to be modified in any way before analysis? Perhaps you have data in Excel that you normally apply some kind of transformations to. Most BI tools have data transformation capabilities, and there are different ways they do this. So some have a separate data transformation layer, some have their own query language that helps you create calculated fields, some have built-in functions that can be simply applied using the graphical interface. If your data isn't going to need cleaning, preparing, or transforming in any way, you might not need a tool that has the more advanced functionalities. And of course, the more advanced the tool is, the steeper the learning curve. So sometimes keeping things simple can be the best approach. Finally, in terms of data, some have what's called modeling functionality. Essentially, if you have data that is related but in separate data sources, the data modeling allows you to create a unified data source by simply telling the tool how they are related to one another without the need for writing any code. For example, I have different sheets in an Excel workbook, 
I can use a drag and drop interface to join them together. Then when it comes to analyzing the data and building visualizations, all of the columns from the different sheets that I need will be available together. So is this something that you might need? Do you normally combine data in Excel to produce your reports? If so, it's something to consider because not all tools have this functionality. One tool that does is the sponsor of today's video, Zoho Analytics. Now we move on to something that is one of, if not the most important elements to consider for many reasons. Not least because it's the area of a BI tool where you'll probably spend the most time building your visualizations and dashboards. So you'll need to like working with it. Of course, you get used to anything after a while, but my advice is to test out each tool you now have on your shortlist for usability. A good way to do this is to try and create the same analyses with the different tools and time yourself on each one to see which is quicker. For example, using the same data source that you can get hold of via the link in the description, with each tool, try and create this. One scorecard visualization, one column chart broken down by two dimensions, and one pie chart. Then in terms of customization, on the scorecard, try to make everything aligned in the center. Then try to change the colors of the columns of the column chart and the segments of the pie chart. Finally, try to modify the axes labels font size on the column chart. Time yourself. Once you've completed these tasks for each of the different tools, you'll not only know which one is faster to use, but also which one you like using more. There is, of course, more to the data analysis capabilities of BI tools than just building visualizations. There's also the calculation engine to consider. This can be used to not only carry out basic calculations like multiplication, division, etc., but also to create new data fields that do things like group values together and apply filters to metrics. All tools vary in terms of the things they can do and how they do them. Some have their own proprietary query language. Some use SQL-based syntax. With some, you can go quite far just using functionalities built into the user interface. Whatever your requirements are, you'll need to consider that there'll definitely be some learning to do. Finally, another thing you might want to consider if you're just getting started with BI tools and data analysis in general, is whether the tool offers any kind of AI capabilities. Some tools now, as we saw with Zoho, have integrated AI assistance. AI for BI tools is still in its infancy, in my opinion, and is best suited to things like summarizing the results of data analysis rather than the analysis itself. But personally, I'm not convinced that it should be a deciding factor or a priority when it comes to choosing your BI tool. 
pretty soon, I think all BI tools will eventually integrate some form of AI into them as it starts to mature. All right, so once you've built your visualizations and dashboards, you're going to want to share them with stakeholders. Some questions you'll need to ask yourself are, who are these dashboards for? How will they be consumed? Are they within the same organization or outside? Because some BI tools can only share dashboards and reports securely with someone who has an account with the tool's provider. Some tools have an additional tool you need to read and view the dashboards. Some are fully cloud-based, some have a cloud service as part of the sharing process, so it's not as straightforward as you might think. You'll want to investigate each tool for its sharing capabilities, processes and limitations. If your audience is primarily going to be consuming your dashboards on their tablet or even smartphone, what do they look like on those devices and how easy are they to interact with? Does the tool allow you to create a separate mobile version of your dashboards for greater sharing compatibility? Another important element of dashboards is interactivity. So options that allow dashboard viewers to interact with the data presented and essentially ask questions on the fly and get answers back in real time. These interactivity options include things like global dashboard filters, applying filters using the elements of charts, the ability to drill down into charts, zoom in on charts, change the visualization type. There are lots of possibilities. Again, you want to ask yourself some of the same questions as before. What kinds of interactivity options will your dashboard viewers expect? Should there be maximum interactivity? Or might those who are going to consume your dashboards be confused by too much interactivity? Anyway, pretty much all BI tools have good interactivity options, so it shouldn't affect your choice to any great extent. It's only when you know that there is a specific way that dashboard viewers are going to want to interact with your dashboards that might be a little technical, you'll need to make sure the BI tool is capable of making that happen. Thanks again to Zoho for sponsoring today's video. Please check them out using the link in the description. If you're interested in becoming a business intelligence analyst, check out this video or click here to visit the Learn BI Academy. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon for another video. Until then, bye.